There are no cars here, but what you will find are lots of horses, boats, and bikes on this top 10 island in the U.S. I ask, how is it that modern conveniences sometimes just seem to speed up our lives even more? While I don't think we want to give up our technology, it is good to find places where you can truly take a break from the day-to-day -day life of the 21st century. There's an enchanted island between the Upper Peninsula and the mainland of Michigan that allows you to go back in time a couple of centuries ago to the Victorian era. Mackinac Island is one of those rare places that gives you a glimpse into the simpler life. Quaint bed and breakfasts, a grand hotel with a long balcony. Instead of car horns and sirens, you hear the clip-clop of horses pulling carriages. In this video, we'll take you completely around the island, explore some of the trails. Last week, we showed the British in Colonial Michelin Mackinac. Well, we move up 100 years later, as that fort moved to this island. Welcome to Fort Mackinac. Now in control of the U.S. Army, shortly after the Civil War. Fire! We'll talk about the amazing bridge that connects the Upper Peninsula with the mainland. Show St. Ignace on the Upper Peninsula side of the bridge, known as a winter wonderland. In Mackinac City, we'll show Mill Creek Discovery Park, where you can go zip lining and rock climbing. We end our video in Sheboygan, where we take a boat tour to three lighthouses and three shipwrecks as we cruise along Lake Huron. So come with us, back to the simple life. Enjoy the trees, the waters of the Great Lakes, the adventures, and the nature of Pier, Michigan, Mackinac Island, St. Ignace, and Sheboygan. Before we go over the Mackinac Bridge to take the ferry to Mackinac Island, I'm going to show you a restaurant which has a neat little museum of the bridge, Mamma Mia's Pizza. As well as great pizza, they also have subs, tacos, in a vintage setting. Enjoying the pizza with my good friends Nick Sharp, the magician, and his lovely wife Jennifer. Upstairs above the restaurant is a little bridge museum where you can learn about the building of the Mackinac Bridge. This bridge opened in 1957, took 48 months to build by 3,500 workers. Sadly, five workers did lose their lives while working on the bridge. Its five miles total length remains one of the longest bridges of its kind. When you are driving over the bridge, you'll notice the inside lanes a steel grid instead of the asphalt that are on the outside lanes. That is to allow the wind to flow right through the bridge, which can sway as much as 35 feet. This bridge is the dividing line between Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. We arrived at the Upper Peninsula. On the west side is a little park. You can get a great view of the bridge. St. Ignace on the north side of the bridge. In wintertime, this is a popular spot for cross-country skiing, snowmobiling. While there is much more to do in Mackinac City than St. Ignace, there is a nice waterfront area here. Restaurants, shops, and a casino. It's just things are more spread out than they are in Mackinac City, and definitely more quiet. Less crowded. The Wawa Tam Lighthouse is here, behind the Mackinac Grill and Patio Bar. In this cool British double-decker ice cream shop. The Starline Ferry is here, one of two similar ferries to Mackinac Island. We are taking Shepler's Ferry to Mackinac Island, which you can do from either Mackinac City or St. Ignace. I chose St. Ignace because it tends to be less crowded here, more convenient. Day parking is free, overnight parking is $10 per night. For a round trip, is $30 for adults, $19 for children, 5 through 12. Pets are free. It is $16 if you want to bring a bike. There are things you can add on while booking you might want to consider, like a Grand Hotel lunch, carriage tour, or Fort Mackinac admission. Some of the morning cruises will go under the Mackinac Bridge. Those cruises are noted on their booking page. When you do that, it is a 25-minute trip versus a 15-minute trip if you go straight to the island. The Starline Ferry is a couple dollars cheaper as well as a couple dollars cheaper for the bike, but both ferries are very similar. Good service. 
As you arrive into the harbor of Mackinac Island, you notice the large Grand Hotel, which first opened in 1887 as a summer retreat for vacationers who traveled to the Upper Peninsula by train and then took a steamer to the island. It is known for having the longest porch in the world at 668 feet. The 1980 movie Somewhere in Time was filmed here. It is a 15-minute walk from the boat docks to the Grand Hotel, so you can take the Grand Hotel taxi, $7 per person. The ferries let you off in the middle of Main Street. We are going to start on the south end of Main Street at Windermere Point and explore the island moving in a counterclockwise direction. Definitely want to pay attention, it's a bustling Main Street. On the left, the Lakeview Hotel with a great turtle brewery and distillery restaurant. Which, by the way, is what the name Mackinac means, Great Turtle. The Shepler's Ferry Dock on the right, where we started. On the left, the Bicycle Street Inn and Suites with the Kilwins. Further down, the Main Street Inn, which is next to the Haunted Theater. By the way, these hotels are not pet friendly, but the Mission Point Resort is. It is located about a half a mile up the road. Now, if you don't have a bike, you can rent one at Mackinac Island Bike Shop or Reba's Bicycle Rentals. Also, you can actually rent a horse and carriage with Jack's Livery Stables. Even if you haven't done it before, don't worry, they will show you. It's about $100 an hour for a two-passenger carriage. We are going to step in Joanne's Fudge for some coffee. Miana making me a delicious hot vanilla latte. Mmm, good. You can experience Mackinac Island by kayak with Great Turtle Kayak Tours with a variety of tours with single or double or stand-up paddle boards. Some tours also include snorkeling. Continuing on Main Street, the Lilac Hotel on the left. More places to satisfy that chocolate urge with Sanders Fine Chocolates and Reba's Fudge Shops. There's that big chain coffee shop you might have heard of. Also, Horn's Gaslight Bar and Restaurant. At Mackinac Island Carriage Tours, you can do an hour and 45 minute tour from early May to late October. It's $36 for adults, $15 for children, five through 12. The Mackinac Island Welcome Center on the left. On the right, across the street from the Welcome Center is the Pancake House. And after that, the Chippewa Hotel. Rooms with balconies facing the harbor or Main Street. They also have the Pink Pony Restaurant with waterside views. Okay, let's cross the street and head to the fort. Fort Mackinac sits up on a hill, provides a great view of the harbor and Main Street. Colonial Michelin Mackinac that we saw in last week's video was set in 1779. Well, a year later, the British would move it to Mackinac Island. But in 1896, they would relinquish control to the U.S. However, the British would recapture the fort in the first land engagement of the War of 1812. But the fort would be returned to the U.S. following the end of the war. There are 14 buildings that are open to the public, a museum where you can learn more about the fort. The Fort Mackinac Tea Room Restaurant has a really great view of the harbor, I think a must-do on the island. There are demonstrations and tours by costume interpreters, including cannon and rifle firing. Command, there are two commands. They are ready, fire! Just below the fort is Mackinac Island State Park, a statue of Jacques Marquette, a Jesuit missionary who founded Michigan's first settlement, as well as St. Ignace. The bark chapel has nothing to do with dogs, Bella, but was named for how it's built with tree bark. Now at mile zero, we continue our bike tour this is Michigan Route 185. Do you know there's never been a car accident on this highway? I got a feeling it's the moment my life's gonna start. I got the feeling when the windows roll down in the car. It is 8.2 miles completely around the island. As you start to get away from downtown, this rush hour traffic lightens up. I got a feeling it's all feeling good. The sun will show the way.
now at mile marker two. In addition to this outer loop trail, there are some nature trails with boardwalks. Also a six mile out and back tranquil bluff trail for hiking and walking. And there's a two mile paved trail to the Arch Rock, just to name a few. Watch out, Bella. There are many beaches along the way to experience the clear waters of Lake Huron. I'm choosing to take the road less travel, the rocky path. Now on the north side of the island, the water gets more colorful, more foliage along the shoreline. A little bit of a hill, easily manageable, not bad. Just enough elevation to make it even more scenic. You can see the Mackinac Bridge way off in the distance. About halfway on the Outer Loop route is British Landing. You can take State Road or British Landing Road that cuts through the middle of the island. This is a good place to grab a bite to eat at the Cannonball Oasis, a basic menu, nothing fancy, known for their fried pickles. Pretty quick service. Lots of picnic tables under the trees. I'm taking my food to the water. I'm having the Detroit Special, a chili dog with onions. Time to get back on the road. Hey, little girl, I'll race you. I won. Don't you want to live out your wildest dreams? Cause right now, we've got everything that we need. No time to waste, no better place to be. Cause we could wander as far as the eye can see. As we start to head back in the downtown area, there's a long boardwalk. This is the best part of the island for the sunset. After eight miles, we arrive back in downtown. Time to head to the ferry terminal. Make sure you are in the right lanes. There's one for Mackinac City and one for St. Ignace. Another scenic ride as we sail out the harbor. We arrive back at St. Ignace, back over the Mackinac Bridge. Just have one more place to show you in Mackinac City, then we'll move on to Sheboygan. For most of Mackinac City, make sure to see last week's video. About three and a half miles east of downtown Mackinac City is the Mill Creek Discovery Park, where you can witness the power of the creek harnessed to cut timber into lumber in a reconstructed sawmill. Demonstrations by costume interpreters showcase the saw pit method of cutting lumber. It was lumber from here that helped to build much of Mackinac Island. There are three miles of trails through the Michigan forest with 130 bird species. For general admission, it's $10.50 for adults, $8 for children 5 through 12. The adventure tour, which includes zip lining and rock climbing, is an additional $11. It is pet friendly. Caught up with this nice family from northern Indiana. Today is too short not to take every chance. And I think we should it all while we can so follow my lead pick up your feet and dance it's never too late to tear out the page let's make a change of plans what kind of bread are you gonna be i'm gonna soar like an eagle all right i wanna take you with me where do you wanna go imagine the way it could be if life was an open We head to our final destination, Sheboygan. There is an island just south of Mackinac Island that you can drive on, Blanc Island. You catch the Plant Transportation Ferry in Sheboygan. It is $74 for a car, $32 for ATV, or $6 for a bicycle. It's a 45 minute trip. We enter the quaint downtown of Sheboygan, located 50 miles southeast of Mackinac City. Sheboygan Main Street parallels the Sheboygan River, which flows from the north end of Mullet Lake to the Straits of Mackinac. 
It is popular for kayaking, where you can rent from Nautical North Family Adventures. That's where we're going to catch a glass bottom boat tour. There's a couple of restaurants to get a bite to eat before or after your tour. Across the street is the Sheboygan Brewing Company. And at the marina is the boathouse on the river with waterside dining. Nautica North Family Adventures has a 90 minute lighthouse ship or a glass bottom boat tour aboard the Yankee Sunshine. We go out the Sheboygan River, out into Lake Huron, past the 14 foot shoal lighthouse. Three shallow water shipwrecks every single day, five times a day. At two o'clock, we go snorkeling over an 1891 shipwreck. Come join us. It is $28 for adults, $13 children, six or 12, $4 for children, five and under. It is fully narrated. At the beginning of the 1800s is when they started bringing passenger vessels up this way. So they'd bring them from various locations all over the Great Lakes, up to the mouth of the Sheboygan River, drop them off there. And they have four to five cruises a day, but on the 2 p.m. tour, you can also go snorkeling for an extra $10. We pass the Sheboygan Crib Light. A nice scenic walkable jetty. Good for fishing. This is also where Gordon Turner Park is located at, at the mouth of the Sheboygan River. This is one of the better beach parks of northern Michigan. It's a good place to launch a kayak or view the birds in the nature. Nice picnic areas. Our first stop, the 14-foot Shoal Lighthouse located on the northern end of Lake Michigan. It was so named to indicate that the lake is 14 feet deep here. This is still an active lighthouse today. The Straits of Mackinac, well known for great scuba diving with many shipwrecks. The Genesee Chief, a 142-foot schooner that was abandoned in 1891. And there's the captain of the Jenny Lynn. Before we head out of town, I'm gonna show you a good place for coffee and tea. These Timber Ridge carts are the best. Rolls on any surface, makes it easy to transport your stuff, and folds right up for easy storage. I put a link in the description below. Back where we started next to the Dixie Saloon is the Mackinac Bakery. Half of it is for tea and the other half for baked pastries, breakfast, and coffee. A little dining room. Great coffee for that 1500 mile trip down I-75, back to the south. Yeah, I wanna take you with me. Where do you wanna go? Hey, if you live in Florida or any other southern states that gets brutally hot in the summer, northern Michigan is ideal. Lows in the upper 50s, highs in the low 70s. It's like winter in Florida. Don't know if there's a better place to escape the summer heat than pure Michigan. I'd love to hear your thoughts on northern Michigan. Another good place is Lake Tahoe, where we are headed next after a 2,800 mile drive on the open road. Plan to do four to five videos out west. Also working on plans for a video series of both of Hawaii and Alaska, Lord willing, within the next 11 months. You can keep up to date with us on Facebook. Also make sure to subscribe to see some really good stuff coming. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, or if you would like to hire us to film your city or region, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. From the Straits of Mackinac, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be. See you in a couple of weeks in California.